<clears throat> with the uh, final assembly laid out from Mr. Philip McCullough and I just wanted to show you something. Uh, we're going to take a look at the valves and the seats <clears throat> and also I wanted to show you on my heads how I check all of the stem heights to make sure they're all the same depths in a chamber. This one has just been a phenomenal head as far as the machine work, the seats, how they, everything just laid in. This is picture perfect. Um, I could probably do 10 cents of heads and it wouldn't lay in like that. I mean, it ain't that the other stuff I do isn't absolutely picture perfect, but that everything would just lay in exactly on the number like playing cards. Anyway, I wanted to show you how they set up the height difference and everything. First is my calibration spring. Before I check my springs on all my heads, I have a calibration spring that sets my pressures on the spring so I know that I'm getting what I'm supposed to get out of it. And what I'd like to see is 120 pounds on the seat, about 300 or so over the nose, because instantly, as, as I've told you, the single Z28 spring, while a pretty good spring, will lose 10 pounds just right off the bat. Maybe I've been told in 30 minutes. I know that in a couple of hours of running, they'll drop almost 10 pounds. So I always stack mine a little hard. You just got to make sure that your break-in procedure, it fires right up when you get ready to start it. So first thing let's do, let's take a look at these valve seats and locations of where I put the 45 degree in the seat width. And then we'll go to how I measure the stem height real quick. Thank you guys for staying with me. I'm just, you know, I know it ain't a big bad head. It ain't a Brodex or some of the other stuff. But to take something this unique and make a stage four out of it and really perfect it, you know, you just don't get to do this every day. And I live for this kind of stuff here, the older stuff too. First thing I wanted to show you, look at how the seat and you can see the gray lap valve. Let's get two of the same side by side, okay? On all the exhaust, you can tell the width of the exhaust. Let me back up so you can see a little bit better picture. Okay. I'm coming in at right at about 50 thousandths. Yeah, I got 51 here. And I come over here to this one. I mean, like I said, it's just absolutely phenomenal how close they get. That's about 49. 49 to 50. Okay. The widths are the same. Now the next part. On the Super HP valve job, look at the distance. See the gray line? Now look how far it is from the edge. It is running on the street, so I do like to bring the seat up just a touch to grab some meat. Uh, this makes for a better heat transfer. So I try to keep it right there around the, the bottom. I'd say maybe 20 thousandths up. Let's see what we got. About 28, I'd say 30 thousandths. Hold on a minute. Yep, from the bottom of the gray line to the edge of the margin, I'm looking at about 30 thousandths. And it's the same way on both of them, every one of them. I'm real precise on location on where the seat is on the valve and also the thickness. Now here's a, a amazing coincidence. When you get them like this on the same place, when you do the stem height, you're going to be surprised at how close the stem heights are. So it's kind of like checking an, an algebra problem, 
by going in there and going in reverse. If this checks out and they're all the same width and in the same location, then when I take my stem height gauge, they should line up and all the stem heights be about the same. Let's look at the two intake valves. Okay. I just I'm just spot on with this. Okay, at 45 thousandths, boom, right there. I come over here to this one. Just right there, maybe a thousandths bigger, 46 to 47, but just right on. Now, if you can see the shiny part on the intakes, what I wanted to show you is after I get done with the seat, I took the 30 degree angle and I bring it right up to about 10 thousandths above the gray. So where the gray seat width is, 10, about 8 thousandths below is the margin, so you can see shiny on one side of the, of the gray. And up above is the 30 degree angle, which took that nasty OEM ridge out and blended it with a 30. That shiny part is 30, not 45, all the way to the face of the valve. You have to do the valve job first in order to be able to pull that 30 and bring it down and that's what I do. Now on the exhaust side, <coughs> I'm not going to do that because on the exhaust we got air coming up and going around the valve. I don't want with the way that the port is shaped on this head, I don't want a 30 degree cut on it right there. I want it to anchor up and the, and the air flow and try to skip where this tulip is. By cutting that 30 degree, I'm going to cause the air to come and want to hug the stem more. This is like throwing a basketball hoop and giving me a bank shot and shooting it higher up on the stem rather than down lower. All right, that's the seats in there. Now let's take a look at the head. It is really hard to see. Now that I took that blue dockum, I can see the gray line right there she is it's going to be really hard for you to see it there's the gray line there and the gray line there just because the blue dockum is gone i did that so the chambers would look really pretty when philip got them so he could see the quality of my workmanship on the polish but they're there i've got a good 30 degree cut you might could see that wow look at the 30 i got about uh, 50 to 60 thousandths with the 30 on intake and exhaust and then a decent little 60 where the bowl rolls right into it okay now let's take a look at stem heights i'm going to go ahead i'm going to show you how i prep the head to put them together and oil them let's stand back and take a look at this procedure what i was wanting to show is every time when i get ready to do a set of heads this is my calibration spring that i got from regis and I checked, it gives you two pressures, one at 2, 250, and one at 2 inch. Man, I'm within a pound on each way. So I know that on the money, my valve spring checker is going to tell me exactly what I've got to have. All right, we got that out of the way. Now I'm going to show you how I set up the stem heights and load the valves. do is, although a lot of customers tell me, yeah, I'm going to put the heads on right now, I just don't take the chance because a lot of time life gets in the way. Best thing to do is to treat each head like it might set for a while. Uh, the only downfall is when you first start the motor, it's going to throw a lot of smoke out for about a minute or so till it's gone because it burns this. This is white lithium. I take it and put on the stems on every one of them. Okay. Once I get the lithium on the stems, I'll come back in a second. As you can see, there's plenty of lithium right on the valve stems. Now, here's the part that I do extra for a double lubrication. I take my oil squirter gun and kind of level the head and I shoot oil. This is a 10W40 oil. And as you can see, I just go in there and squirt the oil right on the bronze guide and make a circle around the guide. I do this to every one of them. 
So it's got oil and white lithium, that's why she smokes. Now where most people would make a mistake, mistake is they just take the valve and stick it in. But there's a procedure. When you put the valve in, you treat it like a screw. You slowly and then make a trip or two back. Wham! Now I know that 100% of that valve and guide with the combination of the lithium and the oil is going to be lubricated. You just don't push it in there and forget it. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time, but you're assured that you're not going to have no metal to metal contact when you're doing this. Kind of like taking a piston when you get ready to put it in a bore. I take my hand and wipe the cylinders with oil back and forth, back and forth, and I soak the piston and rings in a milk uh, container full of oil to make sure there's no metal to metal contact where oil has not been. All right, now. That's what I wanted to show you, how to properly load the head and the valves. Alright, now we'll get on to the final part. Okay, at the very end, my install height ended up being 1800. At 1 1.800, I had 123 pounds on the seat and 3 for the nose. The exhaust was the only ones I had to put shim on. The shims were non-existent on the intakes as they were right at 1790 and 1800. So both heads were like this telling me I had a perfect install height. I did verify them using my stem height gauge. The worst stem I had out was on one exhaust and it was ten thousandths out from the rest of them. So I think that the valve job spoke for itself with the alignment of the uh, stem heights with the valve guide in the head. So here we are with our economical screw and stud version. We're putting the C28 springs on them and they're on their way UPS to our good man in Houston, Texas, Philip McCullough. Philip, here's looking at you buddy. The thing I wanted to show you, which I've showed you on some of my other intake manifolds that I've done, when they cast these things, sometimes they'll cast more to one side, like the roof, and on the other side it's the floor. Sometimes you end up with this situation where they mess a davit of material. If you'll notice, this side right here is going to be about 50 thousandths too low. That's not where I cut it. That right there is where Elderbrock missed it. They also missed it on the inner port up here. So the only thing I could do is just barely touch off of it. But look at the difference when you lay something straight across it. There's probably a 50 thousandths drop that they didn't get that line and there's nothing you can do about it. The thing to have done maybe if you'd have figured it out in, in the beginning would have been to mail it back. That's a problem since he's in Houston and I'm here. And it's not that big of a deal to worry about because you can trim the Felpro gasket to the blue silicone bead and it's going to probably come pretty close to lining up to the port anyway. But I just want to take a point. Some of these castings, when they come in, it just tears me up because they'll miss things like that. The right thing to have done would have been to went to a big 1206, but then the head wouldn't have worked. So all you can do is try to clean it up the best you can to straighten some of this out. Like I said, it's not too bad. Maybe not even 40 thousandths. But I just wanted to show you how some of these castings, when they come here and they arrive, how they got debits and areas in them that's low sides and high sides more than the other. Alright, this concludes the TBI Project Manifold 